Hi, and welcome everyone. My name is Susie Rayford, and I'm here with Andy Turner. And we're here today to introduce you to some new composite scores that are derived using both the WISC-5 and the WISC-5 integrated subtests. These scores are designed to improve uh, fairness and accessibility for children who have expressive or motor difficulties. Before we can completely get into the, the meat of the discussion and introduce these composite scores, we are going to give you some background about why you would need the new scores. But many of you here probably already know you need the new scores, so we're not going to focus excessively on that. But we will have some clinical vignettes. And, um, We'll provide all the information about the scores within 45 minutes, so there should be time at the end to ask questions if anybody has one. So the other thing I wanted to say before we got started is the allergies here. We're here in the San Antonio office of Pearson, and the allergies here in San Antonio are really high today. So I hope Andy and I aren't hacking and coughing, but if you hear any of that, I apologize. We'll try to... Um, restrain ourselves the best we can, but some of that is out of our control, so we'll, we'll just do our best. <clears throat> so my name is Susie Inge Rayford. Oh, let me go to the next slide here, sorry. My name is Susie Inge Rayford, and I am a licensed psychologist. In fact, we both are licensed psychologists, and I've been here at Pearson as a Wexler Research Director for almost 15 years. I've developed quite a number of Wexler scales, and I have currently a part-time private assessment practice working mostly with children and adolescents for school-related questions or ADHD, et cetera. And in the past, I have uh, worked in a wide variety of settings prior to coming here to Pearson with patients of all ages for 12 years. And I'm Dr. Andy Turner, and um, currently I'm a research director here at Pearson and working on the Waste 5 project currently. Um, I've been with Pearson almost a year now. Um, before that, I had several years of clinical assessment and therapy experience. Um, throughout the lifespan, but more focusing on children and especially um, early childhood and young children. Um, quite a bit of my practice centered on um, testing and therapy for children with neurodevelopmental disabilities. So now I'm going to go over um, just briefly the objectives that we're going to cover today um, for you in this webinar. Um, our objectives for today are to learn to adjust use of the WISC-5 and improve the ability to use it with children with expressive and motor difficulties. We're going to look at new composite scores based on standardization data from WISC-5 and WISC-5 integrated, as well as the psychometric properties and the clinical utility. We're going to give you information on obtaining and interpreting the new scores and then applying the information to some brief clinical scenarios. So um, the WISC-5 integrated has 12 freestanding entirely new subtests. Each subtest has a different stimulus or response format. Um, there are different types of subtests on the WISC-5 integrated. Some are adaptations of the same item content, and then some are variations that measure the same construct but have different content. Um, these are drawn from all five cognitive domains measured on the WISC-5. Um, and the WISC-5 integrated is used to take a deeper dive and explore reasons for low scores, um, learn about strengths and weaknesses in a child's problem-solving problem processes, and to have more data to inform recommendations for learning modifications and accommodations. So let's just look here at an example. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of reasons that a child may obtain a lower score, and I'm assuming that many of you do, or all of you do assessments, that's why you're here, so you know that sometimes you'll get a low score and want to know more about that. So for this example, we're going to look at the vocabulary subtest. 
both Jane and George obtained a score of five, but um, there are different reasons why. Um, Jane lacks that semantic knowledge, while George knows um, what the words mean but cannot express himself. Um, let's see. And then if we go to the next example for block design, um, this is a more of a visual spatial example here. Rose and Mark both got um, a scale score of five, but different reasons for that score. The WISC-5 integrated and new composite scores will help you determine the reasons behind these low scores and give you insight into the problem-solving processes of the child. Even if a child does not have expressive and motor difficulty, as we're talking about today, you need more information for making recommendations, and these new scores can help. So now Susie is going to show you the test framework of the WISC-5 integrated and explain the subtests more in depth including some aspects of the usage so you know it's more than just getting new scores. Okay. Thank you, Andy, for explaining the, the WISP-5 integrated and its purpose. Um, in case you couldn't tell from those two previous slides, in general, the WISP-5 integrated focuses on subtest level results or item level results. So, a person who's assessing someone can look at those results more deeply at the subtest and the item level. But today we'll be covering how to carry that forward to the composite level and then also make it more accessible for those children. But I am going to review the existing WIS-5 integrated uh, test framework now, and that's merely so you'll know what else you can get from the WIS-5 integrated and in addition to these new composite scores, and then kind of what subtests are there that we're drawing on to develop these scores. So as Andy mentioned, there, there are five cognitive domains covered on the WISC-5, and those are also covered on the WISC-5 integrated. So I'm going to walk you through how the integrated complements the WISC-5 first. So you can see here, these, these are the cognitive domains in this first column. This second column has one side for the WISC-5 and a second side for the WISC-5 integrated. And the way this is set up is the WISC-5 integrated subtest is listed in general next to the subtest for the WISC-5 that it helps you gain more information about performance. So I'm just going to walk down through these domains so you kind of know what's there. So similarities you can see here is on the WISC-5, and here's vocabulary. Those require expressive responses. The WISC-5 integrated similarities, multiple choice, vocabulary, multiple choice, et cetera, all of these. These have the same items as their WISC-5 counterpart. So um, the difference there is that there are multiple choice responses, and the child has read those responses and selects the answer. So rather than recall or expression, it's recognition. So I'll show you kind of what similarities in multiple choice looks like. The other subtests on the verbal comprehension domain are very similar. So similarities in multiple choice item. This is not a real item, but here we have a scientist and a detective are both police officers looking for clues, science teachers on crime shows searching for answers. So this is read aloud and it's presented in a STEM book as well to the child. And they just select the response. There's a two point, a one point, and three zero point responses there. These match the sample responses that are within the WISC-5 and they match the scoring that would be done on the, on the regular subtest. So and one interesting point here beyond what I just said is Vocabulary has both a vocabulary multiple choice and a picture vocabulary multiple choice subtest. So for every um, item on vocabulary, there's a corresponding item in multiple choice format. But then there's also a, a picture vocabulary multiple choice subtest that will present the same items but has four pictures, so you choose the correct answer. And if you read across here, I've listed there are two index scores on the WISC-5 integrated. We were experimenting with these to see 
um, if they would be useful to people. We thought the most obvious was let's create a multiple choice verbal comprehension index so that um, people can still obtain a measure of verbal crystallized ability without the child having to express anything verbally. <clears throat> So that, that's been well received by folks that had uh, ch children with expressive issues that they needed to assess and sort of inspired the rest of the non-expressive index scores that, that were developed now for the WISC-5 that we're going to go over in a bit. On the visual spatial domain, there is a block design subtest. There's a block design multiple choice subtest on the WISC-5 integrated. So this, let me show you a picture of what those items look like. This is block design multiple choice. So there is no motor production requirement here. There is merely a picture at the top of the page, and the child selects which option depicts how, when those blocks are pushed together, it would make this. Um, we have a question, will this presentation only be applicable to the WISC-5 integrated? No. This is something that is applicable to the WISC-5. So just to answer that, there, I'm just giving an overview of the WISC-5 integrated so that you'll know where some of these subtests are drawn from. On the fluid reasoning index, there is a figure weights and arithmetic subtest. These uh, integrated subtests allow more time, so the figure weights process approach subtest merely goes back to the same figure weights items that were missed and allows the child more time. And they can, if they can respond to those, that's included in their total raw score, so you can compare the skill scores without as many time constraints. Arithmetic process approach has a similar presentation to verbal comprehension subtest, but it's not multiple choice. Uh, the child still has to express a response, but they've got the item in front of them in the STEM book so they can see it. And there is a second condition where they're allowed to use pencil and paper. And then written arithmetic has all of the same items as arithmetic, but there's no math reasoning involved. The numerical calculation is just there and they have to, they have to work it. On the working memory domain, there is a visual working memory index that can be obtained from picture span and spatial span. So you'd need the WISC-5 picture span. This is helpful because on the WISC-5, there's only an auditory working memory index and a mixed working memory index, which is the primary index score. So we know from a great deal of research that these domains are, are, there is domain specificity in school age children in the auditory and the visual domain. Sentence recall is a subtest that just expands the construct coverage of working memory. This is a dual task paradigm. It is auditory and there's no sequencing involved. So there's a, there's a higher cognitive load. They've got to listen to a question, answer it, and then do some repetition. So after they've done the processing. And these processing speed subtests, coding recall and coding copy, allows you to examine um, if for low coding performance, where, where might that have originated? So coding recall has four different conditions where first the child sees the items, the regular items from coding, just the numbers, and has to recall which symbol goes with those. Um, Different, different numbers that are in, up there in the key. Then there's a free recall condition where you just write the symbols, have the child write the symbols if they can recall any. Then there's a symbol digit recall where the opposite is done from the first condition. And then there's a matching. And then cancellation abstract is the last one. This subtest is a variation on cancellation. It's got all the same um, positions of response options but there's no semantic demands there or categorization. It's all abstract shapes, so it removes that demand. Page pass, pass these. And then just so you know about the WISC-5 integrated, a little bit about it, um, all of the cases for that norm sample uh, took the full WISC-5. So it's a full link, full co-norm to the WISC-5. 
ages 6 or 16 are covered, similar stratification as the WISC-5, and then every age group in addition is stratified to a mean full-scale IQ of 100. So you're comparing uh, more apples to apples when you compare to the WISC. Okay, let's get to the next one. And now um, I'm going to hand it over to Andy to talk a little bit about some clinical vignettes examples of why to do scores are necessary. Yeah, so um, why do we need these new scores? And um, I just, for my own personal experience, having the WISC-5 integrated or, and or the new scores that just came out this last year would have been so helpful to me. I had so many scenarios in which I either had a child that um, had some sort of problem with expressive ability or problem with motor ability or there was some other question that I, an additional question I wanted answered that I just couldn't quite get from what I was doing with the WISC-5 on its own. And knowing about these um, alternatives now, it would have been so helpful to me in my practice. So I hope what we present to you today helps you to see that that's also true for you. <clears throat> so in scenario one, we're going to talk about extreme expressive difficulties for a child. So in this scenario, if you look at our um, illustration here, the circles show you what subtest would be impractical to administer if you have a child with extreme expressive difficulties. So all of the verbal comprehension subtests.